I have this unique dilemma. I need half inch rigid foam board for the installation on the floor of my school bus conversion. The only thing they sell out here in Las Vegas at the big box stores and anywhere else is one inch foam board. You know, the pink stuff, the blue stuff, the green stuff, XPS foam. Well, one inch wasn't gonna cut it and I couldn't get any delivered. So I decided, hey, let's make a hot wire cutter and slit these in half. Wanna see how? Of course, I don't recommend you do this at home. This is how I did it in my home. So over here on the cutting table, formerly our kitchen counter, we've got the leads. Now out of here, we've got the positive and negative. We've got the wire stretched across, positive on this side, negative in this side. So the current is gonna flow through this wire. This wire is the resistance, that's why it gets hot, and back here to ground. For my particular application, I wanted half inch sheets of foam out of one inch. So I had some extra base molding out there in the garage. I just set these up, it's a nice half inch. So when I run the foam along here, the wire's at the half inch level, it's just gonna cut in a half inch. A couple drywall screws here, just holding it. This is keeping it from pushing forward and that's giving the tension. This one the same, keeping it from pushing forward so I have a nice straight wire. It's just clamped to the table and then down here, one of the secrets of this, I've got a mini sledgehammer tied to the wire. That's putting tension on it, you can use springs or whatever because when this wire heats up, it's gonna expand. So if you just pull it real tight and then heat it up, it's gonna sag. So you wanna have some means of adding tension. I used a hammer, you know, a dead weight, gravity. You can use a spring, whatever you like. Plenty of videos out there that will show you how to DIY this using transformers from old products, batteries from RC cars, parts from the big box store, dimmers and switches and boxes. It's all great stuff, good ideas, it all works. Uh, I wanted to do something a little simpler and just get it done. So this is what I used to make life simple, benchtop power supply. This will output zero to 30 volts adjustable with a max current of up to five amps. Plenty to cut foam through a wire. This is gonna work great and you don't have to worry about you know Mickey Mousing things together or getting things just right. You can tune in what you need right here. Also, other things you should have around, tape measure for measuring the distance there, a pair of gloves, use leather. Don't use rubber gloves. Rubber will melt if you touch that wire and that could get on your skin and be really, really bad. Caffeine, gotta have caffeine. Uh, wire cutters, uh, digital multimeter, fire extinguisher. Make sure it's a C, A, B, C. C is for electrical. You definitely want that because we're working with electricity. Arguably the most important thing now, wire. Online, everybody's going to tell you use nichrome wire. Why are they using heating elements, little space heaters, your blow dryer, anywhere where you see that little coil of wire that gets red hot, that's nichrome wire. I didn't want to order something because when I want to do something, I want to do it now. I found this out. Check it out. Vape shops. Here's a wire, Vapo wire, 26 gauge. It's not exactly nichrome. This is something called canthal uh, alloy, but it's basically the same thing. It gets hot, it cuts the wire, and you can pretty much get it anywhere. Anywhere you got a vape shop, like a 25 foot, 30 foot spool for about 12 bucks. The basics of cutting foam is we're putting current through a wire. The wire is gonna offer resistance. That resistance is gonna be transformed the electricity into heat which is gonna cut the foam as it slides through. Okay, so what we did was we just took a, you know, some regular wire, hookup wire, put a couple alligator clips on. Here's the positive side and here's the negative side. So the electricity flows through the wire, resistance, resistance, heat, 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 and back. What's interesting is this right here won't get hot, but this right here will be 600 degrees because it's only where the circuit is. Another trick you can also do is move these in and out if you're having trouble getting it hot and changing the length of the wire. Right now I've got the positive lead right next to the board. Let's give it power. We're at 2.7, it's gonna drop down a little bit, 2.72, let's say, uh, amps. That's amps going through, current going through. Now if I just move this over, I don't know, inch and a half or so inch, and we hit it again, we're at 2.85, 2.84. You see, we've definitely drawn more current by just moving that wire a little bit. But that's our basic rig. What we're gonna do here, uh, quick before the wife sees, is run our foam right across the kitchen counter here, right between these two, two boards. It's gonna hit that wire and it's gonna split nice and perfect and even in half. Well, that's what's supposed to happen anyways. One thing here I will say, I couldn't get this wire to work with this power supply because it's a little different than Nichrome, I think. I couldn't get it to work at the 48 inch width to cut this whole board. The nice thing about these boards that you use though is they have, they're already pre-scored to split and install easily. You see snap here. So if I snap these in half, they're still 24 inch boards by eight feet long. 
I can feed them through nice and easy. That's just what I'm gonna do. Okay, so we've got power on. Let it come up to temperature. And let the amperage stabilize. Give it a couple seconds to get hot. That wire gets hot pretty instantaneously, but let's just let it uh, everything stabilize. The amps aren't moving around anymore. And okay, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna feed this board in. The feed rate is very important too. You wanna be watching the wire. I don't know if you can see it from there, but you wanna be watching the wire to, you're really not stretching it. You know, you're letting the tool do the work. So I'm gonna just drive this board into that wire. Let the wire just cut. There it goes. You can see it just sink in. Oh, it's so awesome. And just, yeah, I'm pushing a little too fast, but just let it, let it kind of find its way through the wire. Or let the wire find its way through the foam board. Try and keep steady pressure. You don't want to stop. And you want to keep your hand maybe on top of the board here. You don't want the board to come up. If the board, you know, moves up or down, you're going to have a, a bad cut inside. It won't be smooth and nice. So kind of keep it going. You know, with this, I actually, I know I said you don't want to push the wire, but I like to have a little bit of push on the wire. And I'll tell you why, because when you have to reposition your hands, you know, this is a long piece and move them around, it never actually stops cutting. Because if I stop moving the board, then the, 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 the wire being bent, it pulls itself back. So the wire is still moving itself. You know, normally if you're doing more precision or smaller pieces, you just want to, you know, kind of let it fall through the wire. But in this case, I like having a little bit, you know, forcing it into the wire a little bit because that way, if I stop moving, the wire coming back to straight keeps it moving. So the wire never actually stops moving. If it stops moving, it can dig a big hole. All right, keep pushing it through. It's almost through. Well, it's about halfway. See there, I had to readjust and I stopped. So the wire keeps moving though because it wants to come back to center. So we'll keep going, keep going. Can you see along the side there? And see, I can move this board from kind of side to side and it doesn't have to be really straight in here. You can see a little smoke there where I moved off of it. Now you can see smoke coming up. It normally won't smoke till you pass all the way through, but I was moving the board back and forth so I revealed that part of the wire. Wait, that doesn't look so like we'll just that. keep going. Pushing it through. And if you don't have a big kitchen counter or, you know, a wife that'll kill you if you bring this inside, you can use, uh, you know, like a big sheet of plywood or something. Just have something to rest it on when it's coming out, you know, of the other side. Because you don't, like I said, you don't want this part going through the wire to move up or down or you will not have a clean cut. You'll have little ripples in there. And you just want to let this you know, flow through, get to the end. Ba -na -na -na. And really, it's not any work. It's just letting it float through. See, a lot of people make handheld ones and have one you know, with gravity pull it down through it. But you know, forget keeping this at this exact half inch and pulling through. Here it goes. It's about to come through. And that's it. Boom. We just cut it. We just cut it perfectly in half. Right? You got the two sides. Getting a little smoke here. Yeah, it's not good to breathe in. It smells like uh, burning plastic. Like you would think it smells. But no big deal. Open the door. Get some ventilation in here. No problem. All right. So we split it in half. Check it out. You want to see? Let's take a look. Right here. We got two even pieces, perfectly split in half. Now it will do, can you see those little hairs in there? It will kind of make these little hairs that as you split it, you can see them. Yeah, these little hairs because you just melted it. But now look, we've got two, basically exactly the same, two half inch sheets of the foam, the XPS foam. So that's it, works great. We've got the two half sheets. I've cut 
a bunch already. I got a bunch more to cut and get them into the bus because, you know, we're building a bus. You can see that adventure live every day about 6, six o'clock in the morning Pacific Standard Time. That's Los Angeles, Beverly Hills, Hollywood and Tijuana time zone. Tune in. We do it on Twitch live every day, building the bus conversion. That's at uh, twitch.tv slash Put the link down below and we'll see you next time.